you know, this this is a this is a great show to kick the year off with, and um, you know, just, uh, make sure people don't miss out. Indeed, well said, Francis. Well, let's start with the uh, the Commonwealth Silver Featherweight Championship, which will be on the line on Saturday. Masood Abdullah, unbeaten so far in nine fights, takes on what could be the toughest test of his career. Kes Ashfaq is an Olympian. He's only lost a couple of times, but he contests those losses. And Kes, I'm going I'm to start with you on this one. So many people say, <coughs> say no to Masood. All I hear is, he said no, he said no. He won't fight Masood. They won't fight Masood. You said yes. Why? Straight away, it's, it's the way I am. It's the way I'm built. I remember being sat outside the uh, shopping centre with my mum at the time. And uh, Lee, my manager, dropped me a text. Literally, that's all it was. He messaged me. And uh, within 10 minutes, me and my coach both were confirmed. So literally all it took is because I do believe that I'm, I'm good enough and more than capable of getting to world level. And this is, again, it's a... Uh, a starting point now for the week. Well, look, Masood's another fighter that's been getting a, a lot of hype. Do, do you believe it? I think he's a good kid. I've got, I've got nothing uh, bad to say about the kid. He's a nice kid outside the ring as well, but obviously that changes when that ball goes, and uh, that's what I'm expecting. I'm expecting a good, tough fight, um, but I do believe that I, I come out on top. Well, he's got a win over a guy that's beating you. I don't think we can get away from that. He emphatically beat Mark Leach, and Mark Leach has a win over you. Is that just something that we should ignore? Like, what, what do you think of that? Um, well, around that fight, there was loads of issues. Um, I think most of the Zoop weights in the division at the time would have beaten me that night. There was so many issues before camp, around camp, uh, personal stuff. But that's just, this is one of those things I've, uh, I've moved on from there. Um, I've learned loads from the experience. But yeah, it's just, uh, if, if, you want, if him and his team want to take that into account, then it's probably better for me because, of, because I know what happened around yes, the scene. But yes, quick question. Do you think I had any issues against Mark? Issues? Yeah, I mean, you're saying you had issues. Do you think I had any problems going into that fight? I wouldn't know. So why make up any excuses? You lost, that was it. I lost, that was it. Okay, it's, it's, hey, well, plain, it's plain simple. Don't make up any excuses. Be a man, own up to it, and that's it. <laughs> I, ha I had problems going into with Mark Leach as well. And that's fine. But yeah, but what, don't make up any excuses. But it's just, simple just, as that. If you just be like, okay, the better man won. That was it. Okay, if you're looking at that fight, then no, that's, but that's, that's fine. That's, that's what fine. it Listen, is. It just seems to me you're looking into that fight, and that's fine to me. Yeah, you're but every time me. I hear this shit, Every single time, you're like, oh, yeah, I had, I had injuries, I had this, I had excuses. But you're never saying anything that actually happened. Because what was, no what's your excuse for losing because, to Mark? Because no one needs to know what really happened. But, so why mention it? If no one needs to know, don't talk about it. Well, I'll it's talk plain about, and simple. I'll talk about what I want. So why mention it if you're not going to... Because say, I'll talk about what I want. That's what you do, you talk. Yeah, I'll talk about Good what man. I want. It's fine. I'll tell you what, it's lucky you two on the other ends of the tables together, isn't it? <laughs> you lot are any closer, mate. <laughs> Kez, um, yeah, I'm sweating. <laughs> you got Sam Noakes sweating. I don't know if you've got Masood Abdullah sweating, but is he underestimating you? I don't know. Well, we'll find out on the, on the night, but like I say... I, I don't underestimate anyone. I show my opponents my respect. The you, you know, that's, that's my duty. I take every opponent seriously, no matter who they are and what level they are. And if I lose, I lose. If I win, I win. It doesn't matter. That's part of the sport. You've been asking for real fights, Masood. This is real. This is an Olympian. This is a, you know, a guy very much, as you can tell, coming to win. Doesn't really get much realer than this, does it? No, I mean, listen, I respect Kez a lot. I think he's a great, great opponent. I think it's a, it's a, good, it's a good step in the right direction. I do believe he is better now than what he was for Mark Leach. I think I'm going to get the best Kez there is. Let's see what happens Saturday night. But I just don't like hearing this thing every single time. Oh, yeah, I lost because of certain issues. I had issues. Sam Noakes has issues. Anthony Yard has issues. Everybody on this table has issues going into fights. Just don't be real. That's all I'm saying. I understand that you've been getting messages from fans uh, encouraging you to knock out Kez Ashfaq. I was watching one of your interviews. Is, is that the case? Tell us more. That is correct, yeah. What, what, what are they saying? I think just beat this guy up. He's cocky. He keeps making up excuses. And that's it. Do you think Kez is going to touch the canvas in this fight? You tend to put people down. Listen, I'm not 
I'm not naive. His experience is vastly greater than mine. I don't know. I'm going to go in there, you know, same as him, two hands, two legs. I'm going to hit him with the best shots I can possibly hit, and let's see what happens. Okay, Kez, let's come to you finally on this fight. I want you to look down the table at Masood Abdullah and tell him what's going to happen on Saturday. He's getting beat. Simple as that. It's, that that's, uh, as, 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 since he wants me to be straight at the point, that's as straight as I can be. Masood, I'm sure you have something to respond with. Okay. <laughs> well, there we have it. Bubbling up nicely indeed. Commonwealth silver featherweight title on the line on Saturday night. Unbeaten Masood Abdullah against Kez Ashfaq. They, uh, yeah, they took that one up very well. Looking forward to that. Let's move up to the lightweight division where we've got two unbeaten fighters. Someone's O has got to go. We've got titles galore on the line. The Commonwealth title, the WBC international silver title, WBO international title, and now also the coveted British lightweight championship. The vacant title will be on the line. Sam Noakes and Lewis Sylvester. Uh, Sam, uh, actually, Lewis, let's, let's start with you. Um, Big night for you, big opportunity. You know, you're the English champion. You come into this with plenty of confidence. Your own unbeaten winning streak. Tell us your thoughts. Yeah, I mean, what a fight. How many titles are on the line? Obviously, I've, I've met Sam before. We've uh, done a few rounds in the past. I mean, that was three, four years ago. But, uh, yeah, massive opportunity for me to, to come take what Sam's got. And I've trained hard enough in this camp. I've trained very hard. I've, put, I've left all my eggs in one basket. I've moved to, to Steffi's house, my manager's house. And yeah, I've, I've literally given it my all, so I'm, I'm coming to take over. What do you make of Sam? He looks like a very dangerous lightweight. He looks like he, well, he does. He knocks everyone out. What do you make of him? He's a mid middleweight, but can make lightweight, can't you? See what I mean? You can get down and you think I look bad today, you wait till tomorrow. But lucky we were fighting Saturday, isn't it? <laughs> Saturday, I'm yeah, going to pick yeah. you up one hand, spin your back. Yeah, well, like you'll have, hey! you'll have to, you'll, <laughs> that's the thing. You're big, but I'm very quick on my feet. So You are you are very quick on your feet. Yeah, I'll give yeah, you that. But oh, obviously, it's boxing, isn't it? Yeah, I'll get oh, it. Don't worry. 12 rounds a long old time. Oh, it's a big time, man. Big time. But like, yeah, how, long, how many times have you been sparring in this, this camp? How many times have I been sparring? Yeah, how many rounds have you done in sparring? Uh, probably six to eight, I reckon I've been doing. Is that it? Yeah. And I couldn't get through the others. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> No, yeah, it's a great fight. Um, I've got a lot of respect for Sam. <laughs> He's clearly got power. He wouldn't have had 12 knockouts if he didn't. Um, I've got very good footwork. I'm a back foot fighter. He's a forward fighter. It's going to be Bull versus Matador, isn't it? Do you think he's ever been in with someone like you with your skills? No, nah, definitely not. I think I've got the best footwork and the best head movement in, in the lightweight division mm -hmm. at the minute. So I feel like I'm going to be tested. He's going to be tested. It's, I think... That this is, I might be getting overlooked. I might not be, but no, we'll no, see no. you ain't getting overlooked. But as I say to that comment, though, head work and footwork don't win fights. No, I don't know, you right. And I will listen. You pose a lot of problems, and I've been training for that. So obviously, the soda that would have started all this beef. Everyone's all ready to go now, aren't they? But <laughs> listen, it's a good fight. He's trained hard. I've trained hard. Dev, you know, you got your little spoon out trying to get it going. But both respectable lads at the end of the day, and obviously, we'll see what happens Saturday. Are you looking at him as the toughest test of your career so far? Oh, without a doubt. I'm not sitting up here saying I've had a harder fight as a pro. No, but I've, I've boxed movies as amateurs and got older of him three rounds, so 12 rounds is plenty of time. So what do you think he's going to do? Is, is this a case of, in your mind, is this him keeping away and you essentially catching up to him? I think, probably for him as well, this is probably the first fight, really, that we know each other's game plan, isn't it? To be honest, like, really getting into it, he's standing ball the mat door and all that, but... Listen, I think I just do what I'm doing. I've been working on things in camp, same as he has. Listen, all the talking is getting to the end and I can't wait for this to be all finished and we get in there Saturday. I can't, I can't wait. So a big fry up yeah. Sunday morning. Yeah, but mate, yeah. and me, mate. And it's, me. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, yeah. Sam, just, uh, just for, for you on this, Maidstone seem to be doing really well right Jumpstone. now. Jumpstone. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, what are they calling you, the hands of Maidstone? Or? Oh, why are you putting on me? You're the announcer. Yeah, I'm not the one who comes up with all these names. I just, I just that's your job. Ha hands I've just got to agree and go, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> and what's his? He's from Maidstone. His hands are made of stone. Sam, no, how's it going, mate? There you go. <laughs> Pretty good, that. Um, but good time. Is there, is, there a, uh, is there a British title heading back to Maidstone? <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. Francis, tell us about tell us about this fight and uh, what it means for Sam Noakes as well. I mean, you know, obviously laughing and joking aside, I know the guys have got great respect for each other. Um, there's been some, there's some big fights being talked about for Sam later on in the year. Um, you know, the, the 
uh, Gavin Gwynn for the European, Mark Chamberlain. Um, but he knows that Lewis provides his toughest test so far. And um, it's not, you know, like I said, it's, you know, it's a laugh and a joke here today, but come fight night, like, there's ultimate respect for Lewis Sylvester. Um, not just from Sam, but I think from myself and Queensbury and the eye box for actually taking the fight. You know, we, um, there was a, there was a, you know, there was several phone calls made to, you know, it's numerous opponents and Lewis was the only one that took up the challenge. So fair play to Lewis for, for, for being here and, and, and putting on a, you know, potentially putting on a, a, I think potentially fight of the night on Saturday night. Mm -hmm. Sam's, you know, hands of stone and, um, oh, you know, 12, and 12, 12 wins, 12 knockouts. Um, and as his manager, I just, I've got firm belief that Sam can go and do great things in this sport. Um, he's a, one of the most likable guys you've, you meet, not just in boxing, not just in sport, but in general. And he deserves every bit of success he gets. Um, <laughs> he's made he's made several defences of his WBC international silver. Won the Commonwealth, defended that, and now we've got the vacant British. And to add to that, a, um, a you know a really good ranking title for the you know for the WBO. So we are full steam ahead for Sam's career, and he's got you know every opportunity this year to go and make a, a serious dent in the lightweight division. You're on a European and then world level, you know, early 2025. But there's a man to my left in Luis Silvestre who's, who's here to to stop him doing that. So it's a great fight and. Um, just very much looking forward to, to to seeing Sam, fingers crossed, become become you know multi multi uh, belt work champion, and uh, get to thirteen wins, thirteen knockouts. Well, unlucky for Sam Lewis. Let's uh, let's come to you for your your final word. Uh, just have a little look at Sam down the table. You've said plenty to each other. What's your final word to Sam? All the best. Keep safe. Yeah, respect for always. Let's have a good fight, mate. Yeah. See you Saturday. Yeah. Well, I'll see you tomorrow as well, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's, what the, that's what the announcers left to you, Dev. Don't make mistakes like that, mate. <laughs> yes, but you will be seeing each other at the weigh-in and the face-off that you're going to do very shortly. Let's keep things moving. The return of Anthony Yard this Saturday night as well. I think he's, it's not just my opinion, clearly established right now as one of the best light heavyweights in the world, one of the best out there. Anthony, uh, fight number 26, no, 28 for you now. Um, that, that's racking up now, right? You, but you must feel like a fighter at the peak of his powers after that Baturbia fight, after everything that you showed, you must feel in a good place. Sam Flaz. Flaz. Um, first of all, I want to thank everyone for coming, all the media, everyone in attendance, everyone up here. Um, yeah, man. Time to wait for no one. It's been a fantastic career. Um, been brave, worked hard. I will continue to do so. How are you feeling heading into this one? It feels like uh, this year could be very, very big for you. And uh, obviously, you can't look past your opponent on Saturday. Of course. Um, all I know about my opponent so far is um, he's won 32 fights, only lost three. Um, I'm not overlooking nobody in this whole sport. I've never done so. Um, so it's just going to be another explosive performance from me. feels like you're starting to get your flowers a little bit more now. You know, you... People have criticised in the past, but after the performance against Arthur Baturbiev and then seeing how others have performed against him, do you feel like you are getting your flowers and you're getting credit for what the bravery that you've shown? Um, that's never been my focus, really, because one thing I know in this sport is you can't please everyone. There's people in this room that are going to like me, people in this room that are not going to like me, um, and the same for people around the world. You cannot please everyone. Some people will like my style, some people will not like my style. Some people will like the route I've taken. Some people will not like the route I've taken. So um, again, I'm not a, I'm not in the business to be a people pleaser because that's when you fail. My thing is just do the best I can, keep working, keep knocking people out. That's what's exciting, and um, keep rising until I get to the top. Well, there were two light heavyweights that did the best they could uh, this weekend. Just gone, Joshua Boatsy and Dan Aziz. You must have watched it. What did you think? I watched it. It was an entertaining fight, to be honest. Um, especially near the end, you know, they started exchanging and things like that. Um, I just see it as they're two fighters that are trying to rise to world level. I feel like I've I've shown a bit of my character, you know, in the fights that I've taken. Going out to Russia, I got offered step aside money. I said, no, 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 no. Let me go to Russia. Let me get it cracking. Same thing with Baturbiev. Everyone avoided Baturbiev. I said, no, no, no. Bring him. Let me fight him. And the same with anyone else. If the fight makes sense, I'll fight anybody. I've, I've proven that I don't need to talk. Um, when, this, when, this, when this time, we'll make all these fights happen. We know you're not the type to call people out. You've never called anyone out in, in your whole career. The fight's just kind of materialised. Yes. But 
it feels like there is a push. Joshua Boatsy has mentioned your name. The fans have been calling for this for years. You sound open to that fight as well. I'm actually hearing he'll be attending on Saturday night as well. Um, give us your thoughts on that fight. Only if we um, let him in. Only if we let him in. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can let him in. You can let him in. Um, I think it's a, it's, it's a big fight, especially in British boxing. Um, we don't know what route he's going to take. I know he got offered the Bivol fight. Um, he turned it down. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully it does happen. I did say, again, I went on um, Sky and I said, I want to fight Boatsy this year. Um, or the winner this year. Obviously, now it's going to be Boatsy. But um, there's other names. Callum Smith, I'll fight him as well. Um, if I get a world title, world title <laughs> opportunity tomorrow, I'll take it. That's just how I'm built. Um, I want to become world champion. And um, yeah, these guys can't hang on me. That's what I, that's honestly what I believe. And finally, fireworks Saturday night? Always, always. Explosive performance. Um, entertainment for the fans and for the supporters. I don't even like to call them fans, the supporters, people that support the sport. Fantastic. Thank you very much. And Lions in the camp. Gets me every Every job, time. Job. I, saw the, I saw the hype bottles jump up. Um, thank you. Thank you, Anthony Yard. Um, let's move on to the main event. Huge fight. Are you not going to do it again, are you? No, no. All right. Huge fight. <laughs> Hamza Shiraz. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> Poor Sam Noakes, though. You were sweating earlier from that, and now you're all over the shop. Oh, I forgot what the camera's looking at. <laughs> like Hamza Shiraz, 18-0. Unbeaten. 14 knockouts. 12 knockouts in a row takes on Liam. Williams, there's the WBC silver title on the line. The Commonwealth middleweight title is on the line for this fight as well. It's the main event and we can't wait for it. Let's, let's begin with, with Liam Williams. Liam, I've been watching your Instagram. I've, I've been watching the training videos and I'm having to sort of like check the dates and be like, is, are these videos from like four years ago when you were knocking everyone out? They're actually videos from right now. So they, it looks like you're having a tremendous mm -hmm. camp and you look in great shape for this fight. Yeah, mate. Uh, camp camp's gone really, really well. Uh, train my nuts off. Um, yeah, I'm ready. If I'm not ready now, then I, I never will be. So, um, you know, I, I feel I feel back. I've I feel like I've turned back the clock a little bit, and um, you know, I've got back that injection of you know it's just got that killer instinct back and. Um, Really digging in and, and putting the work in, you know. I, I want to be, I want to be the best. So, um, yeah, camp's gone great. Weight, weight loss, very well. Um, in great shape. Yeah, I'm ready. Well, the fight was meant to happen in December. <clears throat> Hamza Shiraz pulled out with an injury, you know, unavoidable, but can't have been easy for you. Must have been a bit frustrating having to train over Christmas, right? Did did he ruin your Christmas? <laughs> Yeah, he did a little bit. To be honest, he was uh, I was planning to fight in was it November, yeah, December, yeah, uh, December. Um, yeah, I was hoping to fight December and um, have a couple of weeks, bit of a chill out. But um, you know, it is what it is. It didn't do me any harm. Stayed fit over Christmas. If anything, it made me better for this fight now. So um, yeah, it is what it is. I still had a little run out. Didn't really take much from it because obviously, for those who've seen. Um, didn't even last a round, like one minute and something. So, um, yeah, I couldn't really take a lot from it, but still going through the process of making the weight, um, just going to the arena and your hands wrapped, just everything that comes with it, you know. So, um, yeah, it was good to get that. But you know, this this is the real one. This is this is where we this is where we want to be now. Well, Queensbury, Hamza Shiraz, Frank Warren, why have they picked you? I don't know. Personally, I think it's a bad mistake. You know, they're bringing me in to get beat by this guy, and um, he's he's very good. He's talented. Um, he's obviously big for the weight. Um, the list goes on, really. But um, I don't think I'm the right guy for the job. I think I think you brought in the wrong guy. <laughs> well, let's get Hamza's thoughts on that. Hamza, let's bring you in here. You are defending your titles against this man to my left. He says he's the wrong. Guy, give us your thoughts heading into this fight. Uh, first and foremost, as always, I'd like to thank the Almighty Allah for allowing us to be here today. Uh, I'd like to thank the media, Francis, Frank, Frank Andy Alien, my team, Ricky, happy birthday. Um, yeah, nah, 
so I'm just looking forward to it. They've put in the work. Um, don't really have much to say, to be fair, but yeah, put in the work. Uh, and yeah, Saturday night, let's go. Well, he got a fight in. He talked about that fight. Yeah, he knocked out the fellow in a round. Looked pretty dangerous in there. Uh, he says that he's benefited from that fight as well. What, what did you make of all of that? And has he gained an additional benefit from knocking out someone in a round before you? I mean, he's always looked dangerous, to be fair. Do you know what I mean? He's got a lot of knockouts. Um, the, respect, the respect is there, to be fair. Um, I'd be a fool not to. I'd be a fool not to. Um, but like I said, in terms of how preparation went for this camp, we prepared for the best version of him come Saturday night. Do you think the best version still exists? I mean, in, a, in, in my head, for sure. In my head, for sure. Like I said, if I didn't, if I didn't think otherwise, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have prepared how I prepared and whatnot. And listen, it's, it's, it's my time to shine now. I mean, it's my time to shine. I know you hear that all the time. You get a lot of fighters saying that. But listen, I, I win Saturday night. I win in good fashion. There's, there's, there's big, things, big things in 2024. Well, Liam, when you look at his record, 18-0, 14 knockouts, knocking out 12 people in a row. Do you see anyone on there that may have given you trouble or do you think you'd have done exactly the same? No, one of them, mate, I would have done exactly the same to, to every person he's knocked out. Um, and that's no disrespect. He can only beat whatever's put in front of him. But as I said, I would have done exactly the same to every one of them. Um, yeah. Is it a padded record then? No, it's not a padded record. He's, a, he's had... Um, a couple of good wins, a couple of, couple of stiff wins. Um, but I don't really feel like he's been in with someone yet who's, who's really tested him and stuck it on him, you know. Um, on Saturday night, we're going we, to see how he holds up there. Well, Unibet have you, and that, that's our sponsors for this fight, Unibet have you as an underdog, seven to two, just over three and, three, three, about three and a half to one. Um, are they right? What, what do you think? Is it a bit unfair? Good for them. I couldn't give a fuck where they got me. <laughs> Shout out to our sponsors, uh, as, as always. <laughs> Thanks for that, Liam, uh, Liam Williams. Um, <laughs> another one for you, Liam. Look, I'm, I'm reading some of the comments online about this fight. A lot of people are picking hands. I'm sure you don't care. But one, one comment that I keep seeing is that Liam Williams' punch resistance has gone. They're saying you can't hold a shot anymore. Why is that out there? Um, there are... <sighs> They're obviously going off um, off the the Eubank loss back what was it two years ago? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to go into de any details, but um, there was reasons for that, and I obviously know firsthand what the reasons are. But um, it, it's not really to talk about here. Um, again, don't care. Leave them. Keep believing, and um, and we find out Saturday because you know Hamza can punch. He, he seems to be able to punch very hard um, and there's going to be points of the fight where he's going to be hitting me so we'll, we'll soon see what the resistance is like won't we Hamza your middleweight fights two rounds five rounds two rounds two rounds do you think Liam Williams can take you into the second half of the fight on Saturday um, I'd, like to, I'd like to think so I'd like to think so because there needs to be a point in your career where you need to you need to go past these certain rounds to to answer the questions and whatnot. But listen, if that, that if that doesn't happen, I won't be complaining. What's the ideal night for you? Um, a win. A Hamza Shiraz win. Listen, that's that, that's that's it. All depends on that for me to achieve my dreams. For me to make my team proud and people who invested their time in me. Do you know what I mean, I got people flying in from LA, from Dubai today, landing. Do you know what I mean? So. I have to put on a performance for, not for myself, but for them as well. I'm doing this for them as, as much as I'm doing it for myself. You think you can stop him? That's the plan. That's the plan. Um, like I said, a, wi a win is, is, is the main priority for now. But the way I've been with Ricky and the way we've been gelling and obviously with Taz and whatnot, I don't see why I can't do it. Well, Chris Eubank couldn't do it. Demetrius Andrade couldn't do it. He's only been stopped on a cut from Liam Smith. What makes Hamza Shiraz so different? Just the way I am, the way I, the way I approach things. I believe my mentality, um, my mentality, and the way I work in camp is just is is elite level, elite level. And I'm rubbing shoulders with great champions in LA as well, so I'm only learning off them. And like I said, r listen, at the end of the day, I went to LA for a reason, and I chose Ricky for a reason because he's seen it, he's seen it, been there, done it. So all I got to do is uh, listen to him and, 
and make it happen and make, make the right things happen as well. Well, Liam, we, we did an interview when this fight was first supposed to happen. It was back in November we did the, uh, the press conference. And you said to me, I see me chinning him. I've played it in my mind over and over. I know the shot and I know when I'm going to do it. So that was a little while back now. Do you still see yourself chinning him? Do you know the shot? Do you know where, when? Yeah, mate, all still still the same view, same vision from me. Um, yeah, it's it is what it is. I think um, I, I think I'm going to stop him. Can you tell us this shot, this vision? Can you give us any kind of clue? Maybe let Hamza know. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping his cards close to his uh, his chest there, um, but you're you're pretty uh, you're pretty clear. You just you just feel that Frank Queensbury, everyone's made a mistake here. You're the wrong guy for this fight. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, as I said, I give him give him his credit. Quality fighter. Um, I've been quite impressed with him myself. So um, fair play to him. But I just think I just think the timing's wrong. <clears throat> Can he afford to stand and trade with you? We'll see. We'll see. Yes, we will. Uh, Francis, brilliant fight, brilliant main event on Saturday. Give us your kind of thoughts on this fight. Well, you know, you guys have said it always. It's a terrific fight. And two guys who have got ambitions of uh, world level, uh, you know, title fights, um, you know, very different stages of career. Um, you know, Liam's been there. You know, he's, 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 uh, you know, he's been in world title fights. He's been in big fight nights and always come through them with, with flying colours. You know, maybe he's got the results that... Once I was with him in um, Miami for the Andrade fight after an early setback, you know, he, he showed, showed his, his true class and his warrior spirit, and he came through that. Um, the Alantis Atlanta, Fox fight um, is, the, is the one that I kind of pick out as a, maybe the nearest comparison to the frame of Hamza. And, he, and, and Liam coped very well that night with Alantis and dispatched him. So Hamza's got it all to do. Um, so that being said, I really do believe that Hamza is, is, is the next guy to watch in the middleweight division. I think he's got every single attribute to to go on and take on the very best in the world. Um, and I think within the next 12 months, you'll see this man with a world title around his waist. I think he's, he's, he's definitely been one to watch for the past 12 to 18 months. And, you know, people are really now starting to take up, sort of sit up and take notice. And a win against someone of Liam Williams' calibre and quality would really put Liam, um, Hamza up there. Liam, just finally, there, there's been stuff out there from, uh, there's quotes out there about Hamza Shiraz potentially going on to fight Eubank, fighting Liam Smith, maybe even Nathan Heaney. All of these quotes are, are, are out there. Do you think they're just overlooking you? Yeah, definitely. As I said earlier, I think um, I picked the wrong person. Um, I see, I, I have seen a couple of things where I see, like, who would you like to see him fight next um, after this? which obviously hasn't happened yet, but um, Haney, Smith, Eubank, and I'm thinking, the fuck are these guys, what are they talking about? They he hasn't beat me yet, and he's not going to. So, um, yeah, we'll, do, we'll see how that plays out on Saturday night. <clears throat> Any final message to Hamza Shiraz down the table? No, good luck. I'm ready for a good fight. Um, may the best man win. And over to you for your final message, Hamza. Yeah, the same, all the best, and looking forward to a great fight. Fantastic stuff. That is our main event. That is our press conference concluded here. Unbelievable show to quick kick off the year for Queensbury in 2024. The main event, Hamza Shiraz, unbeaten in 18, takes on Liam Williams. We've got the return of Anthony Yard. We've got two unbeaten lightweights going at it for the British title and many other titles. And Masood Abdullah takes on Kez Ashfaq. Do not miss this. We'll be live on TNT Sports from 7 o'clock, we'll be live on the Queensbury stream from 5 o'clock and live on ESPN Plus in the States. We'll do some face-off. <laughs>